A Karen comes into the restaurant screeching that she knows the owner and we need to give her and her group of friends the VIP table that's reserved for celebrities. But the thing is, I own the restaurant and I have no idea who this lady is. But I pretended to play along to see what would happen. During the course of the dinner, one of the girls asked me if she thought my life was worthless because I'm a waiter. That's when I decided all bets were off and I was getting my revenge. Here's what I did. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell to turn on notifications. This all happened around Christmas and New Year's. My grandparents immigrated to Canada from Italy in the 70s and opened up a restaurant. When they passed away, the restaurant went to my parents and over the decades they grew and expanded it. I've been working at the restaurant since I was 15. Over time, my parents got older and eventually retired, becoming snowbirds, going to Florida for the winters. They left the restaurant to me a few years ago but still retained a small percent ownership as an additional revenue stream along with their savings. As soon as I gained control, I pretty much modernized the old place. I remodeled the restaurant, I changed the logo, reached out to the local and national papers to put out ads, I invited food critics, bloggers, vloggers, etc. It was very slow at first and I began to worry that the loan that I took out to do all of this was the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life and I ruined three generations of family businesses but eventually it began to work and a local semi-famous YouTuber featured us in one of his videos that was the catalyst for more people to come and review and eventually we were seeing five to ten and times the business we usually get even if it's a Monday. We became a hot spot for major events and it wasn't uncommon for a celebrity to come. On those nights, I even arranged for special high profile clients to visit and cook for our guests. This cost a fortune. So during the holidays, we were beyond packed. It got to the point where people would have to make reservations in July to get a table in December. This process took years to get to the point where it is now. When it gets busy, I don't just sit in the back office. I'm on the floor doing what Whatever needed to be done, even if that means I greet people, bust tables, or even mop the floors. Other nights, when we have high profile guests or events, I'm in a blazer and I'm acting in charge though. On one night, a group of six women walk in. Five of them look like they were still in their early 20s, and the head of the group looked like she was in her mid 20s. My best theory was that she was one of the other four girls' older sister, or possibly an older sorority sister to an incoming college freshman, maybe. I was greeting them at the door, and as they were walking up, Queen B Karen was telling the baby Karens on how this place is awesome. Food is amazing and there might even be celebrities here. When she came up to me, she told me that she needed a table for six. I replied, of course. Can I please get the name on the reservation? She looked at me and said, Oh, I didn't make one, but it's okay. The owner is a personal friend of mine. He said he always has one or two tables that he keeps open for special guests and we can have one of those tonight. Now, generally, this is true of many high-profile restaurants and lately I have been doing that as well, But I had no clue who this woman was, and she definitely never spoke to me about any of this. I did get that she was trying to get in without a reservation, but she literally picked the worst person she could possibly try and do this with. I told her, I am sorry, but we cannot seat anyone without a reservation. As you can see, we do not have any seats available. I didn't want to go all out and say, I'm the owner, and we have never spoke before, so I never promised you a thing, but I didn't want to embarrass her in front of the other girl she was with at first. She then went on and said out loud to one of the other girls to take a picture of me. She will speak to the owner and make sure that I'm either cleaning the toilet or fired by the end of the week. The other girls following her were like, yeah, kiss your minimum wage job, goodbye. I'm not sure if they were in on it with her or they honestly thought that she did know the owner. Queen Bee Karen then went on and said, look, you can either give us a table or I can make your life very difficult. This is not worth losing your job. Constantly pointing, just trying to put me down and then saying things like, obviously you aren't anyone here because if you were, you would know who I am and never even try to tell me anything other than yes or of course. She was constantly trying to belittle me and get that table. At this point, it was a long day for me and the way that I saw it, I had three options. Number one, I tell her that I'm the owner and just call her out on all of this. Number two, I just give her the table and let it be. Or number three, I teach the queen bee Karen and her little minions a lesson. I chose option three. I smiled at her, said, of course, ma'am, follow me, please. I gave her one of the three tables we keep open in case a celebrity comes. It happens from time to time. I told her I apologize for everything, and she is right. It would be simpler just to give her the table. I also told her that the first three rounds of drinks will be complimentary. I sat them down and personally served them. As they were 
sitting down, I told them, we do need one of your credit cards and IDs just to keep on file and we'll give it back to you before you leave. Queen Karen gave me her cards and told me the baby Karen minions that tonight was on her. I took their orders and got them their free drinks and told them, due to how busy we are tonight, there may be a delay on the food. All that the girls were thinking of and cared about were the free rounds of drinks. They ordered the three rounds and still had no food. They eventually called me and asked me to check on it the whole time giving me the world's most nasty attitude since before they ordered. I told them I will check on it, but also asked if they would like any more drinks. They ordered two more rounds by the time the appetizers arrived. At this point, they were sloshed, having done nothing but drink on an empty stomach most of the night and only having had salads after. As more food arrives, more drinks are ordered. What these girls never realized was that they were at our VIP table, which alone cost a few thousand just to sit in, but I didn't charge them for that. What I did charge them for was all of these super expensive cocktails they had through the whole night, except for the first three rounds. In addition, the table they were sitting in, as mentioned, was VIP, so the menus were different than the normal ones. These menus don't say the prices on them. It's a trade secret in the restaurant business. And in addition, it had certain higher end menu options such as white truffle, black caviar dishes, and specifically imported West Coast oysters, among other things. At one point in the night, I was honestly rethinking what I was doing, and I thought that I might be going too far with these poor girls. They might not know any better, but some things reassured me throughout the night, such as one of the baby Karens asked me if I felt like my life was worthless since all I ever became was a waiter. Also, one of the other employees told me how they were discussing how to F with me to the point that they can just do this whenever they want and I will know to always give them a table. I also overheard them say, He's cute, but I would never date a waiter like that. He is such a pushover. There were a bunch of comments like that the whole night, so I kept on with their life lesson. By the end of the night, each girl had racked up a bill in the range of five to six hundred dollars per girl. When I handed Queen Karen the bill, it was for $4,232.23 with tax and tip included, of course. I have never seen anyone sober up so quickly. She went from laughing and giggling with her friends to nearly in tears. She called me over instantly and asked if this was some kind of joke. I took the bill, looked it over and said, oh yes, I apologize. I will get you the correct bill amount. Again, she felt a complete sense of relief, thinking that she got someone else's bill and called me an effing idiot and went on to talk to her friends. When I went back to give her the correct bill, she flipped out again, going crazy. I just asked if there was something wrong on this bill that she didn't order. She and the girls were in shock and went over every single line of the bill, including the first few lines that show their original three rounds, which say complimentary. They then took out their phones and went line by line over everything for the 100th time, adding everything up. Extremely rattled, Queen B simply said, one second, I need to use the washroom. Part of me thought that she might pull a dine and dash and leave the baby Karens with the bill, but kind of low key, I did in a way remind her that we had her ID and credit card. Without making it obvious, I thought she was going to run out on the bill. 10 minutes later, she comes back with new makeup. Obviously, she had been crying and goes on this whole story about how the food was awful, the drinks were bad and so on, demanding that as a bare minimum, I should cut the bill in half with the agreement that the baby Karens will chip in, even though she originally told them that the night would be on her. Then, as if a light bulb went off in her head, she again mentioned her relationship with the owner as if it were going to give me an additional incentive to cut the bill in half. Holding back a grin at this point, I told her no. Just no. I can't change the bill. She whips out her phone and shows me a series of texts with someone called my restaurant's name and then the word owner afterwards, which pretty much I realized what she was doing in the bathroom and just probably changed one of the other Karen Minion's contact name and deleted the previous text to start this new script. I read them and clicked on the contact info and told her that's not the owner's cell phone number. Her reply was, he has multiple phones for business. Of course you don't know all of his numbers. I told her how about this? If we call him and he says it's okay to take 50% off the bill, then I'll do it. Her reply was yelling and screaming to the point where the few remaining customers all began to look over and I knew, okay, it's time to end this. I told her in a less accommodating voice, cut the crap, little girl. You don't know the owner. You have never been here before and if you keep yelling, I will call the police. Her demeanor changed and she 
She was trying to defend herself the best she could. My reply to her weak comeback was, my grandparents founded this restaurant. My family has been running this place for generations. I have worked here almost my entire life. I am the one and only owner of this restaurant and I have never once seen you, heard of you, and I definitely never made a stranger that I don't know and never have met before tonight any promises. The mini Karens were frozen and didn't even know how to react. Queen Bee was in tears. I said, now I gave you the table you wanted, one of these specifically reserved tables for high-end clients, which I didn't charge you for, and I gave you three rounds of free drinks. If you do not pay your bill, I will call the cops and hand them your ID. In tears, Karen signed the bill and the mini Karens took out their purses to give her whatever cash they had, which equaled to maybe a couple hundred, with the promise to pay her back more. Two days later, a man walks into my restaurant fuming and asks one of my bartenders to speak to me. I was in the back office for a bit working, so he waited a good half hour for me. He was Queen Bee's father. She was with him too, keeping her head down. I took them both to my office and showed him highlights of the security cameras, which had especially good quality audio because they were in the VIP section, which we had to keep good records of because we have had other unrelated incidents before. So I showed him most of it, their comments, their orders, everything. When all was said and done, he stormed out with her and was screaming at her the whole time they were walking away. I haven't seen or heard from either of them since, but the original bill I gave them, the one that didn't count the $120 oysters, is framed on my desk. As a side note, I didn't lose much overhead on the table in the three rounds as you might think. The table was originally supposed to be empty, so I didn't lose anything since I didn't expect to gain anything to begin with with the overhead for the food and other drinks more than the loss of the three first rounds. So now that you know everything, was I the jerk? Probably the most shocking thing about what the Karens did in this situation, beyond the money, beyond trying to power her way into getting a table, beyond trying not to pay the bill, was the insight into the way that they see the world by saying the single comment about the worthlessness of the OP, the original poster here. The original poster seems like he was going to take his foot off the gas on his entire revenge plan, but then one of the baby Karens asked him if he felt like his life was worthless since all he ever became was a waiter. That has got to be one of the most deranged, entitled perspectives we've ever seen on this channel before. It might not be as action-packed and crazy as some of the other stuff that we've seen, but the fact that that's how she sees the world is just sick. There is nothing at all that is lower in any sense of the word for having any type of job that maybe doesn't pay as much as the jobs of the people that she knows in her life. This comes up all the time in certain jobs like janitors and stuff. I can't stand when people non-jokingly think that they're superior because they're not a janitor themselves. There's nothing wrong with being a janitor. I can't understand that perspective, but in this case, not only does she feel that way, but she wants to ridicule him for doing a tiring job of being a waiter, or at least that's what she thinks he's doing in this case. And one more thing too, I'm glad that this had sort of a satisfying ending where the dad tries to come in and get this whole thing reversed, then ends up leaving being more pissed off at the daughter than the restaurant owner. The only part that kind of creeped me out about this is the fact that he's surveilling the people that sit at this table. I would probably not go to a restaurant that I knew was recording my audio. Anyway, I'm happy it worked out for the OP, but let me know how you would have handled the situation if this was your restaurant and these were your customers. And let me know jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk for making our guests participate in our puppet themed wedding? I'm a 27 year old male and my fiance is a 26 year old female. We met at college. We were in our school's performing arts program and met in a puppetry class. In the class, we designed our own puppets. Mine named Hat Boy and my fiance's Daisy, she's better with names, were what we initially used to talk to each other and flirt in class. We fell in love and in a way we've considered Hat Boy and Daisy in love as well. Years after graduating, we still use Hat Boy and Daisy both at home and at our local but fairly prominent theater where we perform puppet shows with high-end Muppet style puppets. While planning our wedding, we realized we wanted Hat Boy and Daisy to be part of the ceremony. They've been part of us since the beginning and it just felt right. We also invited our entire troop of puppeteers from the theater and got the idea that we should have our wedding completely officiated by puppets and that our wedding parties would be made up of puppets and our closest puppeteer friends. We figure it'll make for incredible pictures. Here's where we aren't sure if we're the jerks or not. We are insisting that all of our guests also participate and use puppets. In lieu of gifts, we've asked everyone to purchase high quality, but not nearly high quality of professional puppets, puppets to use during our wedding. We took the guesswork out of it and directed them to several vendors, some of whom who offer really
really cool options. Everyone realistically could expect to spend between $150 to $500, depending on what sort of details and whatnot they wanted. We also want everyone to wear their puppets during the entire wedding and reception. All puppets we're suggesting can be mounted on and controlled with one hand. The puppets are meant to be guests at the wedding, in the same way that all of our human guests are as well. Well, let's just say there are a lot of people that are not happy. Both of our parents, my wife's sister and family members on both sides have complained that this is completely unreasonable. They're concerned about how they're going to eat and drink. How are they going to dance? You don't need hands to dance, so I don't know where their complaint comes from. We, of course, don't expect people to have their puppet on their hand while in the bathroom, but everywhere else, we'd really like to insist on it. We also made sure that all the food is finger food. There will be plenty of cocktail tables so people can put down their drinks. We even made sure that all of the food for the dinner itself is portioned so that it can be eaten in bite sizes with just a fork without having to use a knife. We really think this would make for a special day. We only get to do it once and think that it'll be an event all of our guests will remember for a lifetime. We have a hard time believing that once there, they wouldn't have a blast. So are we the jerks for making what we think is a silly but harmless and reasonable request for our one special day? This is one of those ones where it seems like the vast majority of people say that they are the jerks here, but I wonder if it would be different if they provided the puppets themselves. Because asking for people to spend $150 on puppets minimum just to show up at your wedding is kind of rough because not everyone is in the same financial position. And it's $150 minimum up to $500. So if you had a family of four, a wife, a husband, and two kids, and you all bought the cheapest puppets possible, that would still be $600. The way I see it, that's the only real hang up for me here. For everyone else that's complaining about that the wedding would be inconvenient and all that stuff, I mean, it is their one day. This is the one thing they want. So if it wasn't for the financial requirement, I would actually probably be on their side because they're being upfront and saying, hey, this is what we want to do for our wedding. And if people really don't like it and it's not a financial issue, it's just a lack of enjoyment issue, then at least they know ahead of time to not come. Or they can explain to the bride and groom why it is they can't come. Someone pointed out, and that's not even counting all the other wedding related expenses because it's not like the person will be naked or not need shoes or their hair done. Going naked only using a handle to cover up some special part as a male would have been some fun. So if your friends ask you to come to their puppet required wedding for you and your family of four, where you would have to spend between $600 and $2,000 for a puppet wedding, what would you do? What would you tell them? And let me know down below, jerk or not a jerk and why. Am I the jerk because I use my lacrosse skills for evil? My wife says I'm being a huge jerk. I like to keep my front lawn very neat and tidy. I'm not OCD about it, but let's just say if I lived in an HOA, I would not ever be warned about my lawn. I have one neighbor who lets her dog poop on my lawn. This isn't an issue. It's what dogs do. Other dog walkers also let their dogs do their business and promptly pick it up and walk a couple of houses down to the bus stop and put it in the trash or take it somewhere else if they're walking the other way. This one neighbor though doesn't pick it up unless someone is watching her. Well, I have a doorbell camera and I can see from my office when this happens. For the last two weeks, I've been using my old lacrosse skills and a homemade poop flinger to return her property. I may have gotten enthusiastic and didn't always land on her lawn. Sometimes it lands on her house, sometimes on her sidewalk, and one time on the roof. As I stated before, my wife thinks I'm being a jerk, but am I the jerk? A homemade poop flinger? He's actually throwing the poop back? I guess really, if you think about it, you're just returning what belongs to her. From her perspective, she probably has no idea that the OP knows that it's her dog pooping on the lawn, so she just thinks of it as, this crazy guy is just randomly flinging poop at me. Let me know what you would do here, who's in the right, who's in the wrong, and jerk or not a jerk, and why. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories in this series, use the playlist at the top of the description. And next time you live stream, use the cream of the crop music. Search for cream of the stream on Spotify or whatever music platform you use for copyright free music to use for your stream. It's free. Cream of the stream. Either way, thanks a lot for listening. I'll see you guys next time.